Hi guys, uh, welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made a recent doll of mine. It's called Wormtail the Grey Rat. Uh, I decided to go with just a simple grey rat this time, um, and I called him Wormtail. I thought that was really good. Um, so in this video, I'll show you how I made him. Um, he's got a really, really soft coat. It's that fabric that has a reputation for not being able to cut. It's very, very difficult to work with. Um, I have a video on my channel about it. Um, so if you want to know, I'll try and remember to link it below, but I never remember these things. Um, so yeah, super, super soft. Uh, I've used this fabric before on some of my uh, Lima dolls that I made for Calgary Zoo. Um, but I thought it would work really well for this little one. Um, so resin head, resin feet, wire armature. Um, so yeah, if you want to know how I made him, then stay tuned and keep watching. The video of the tail will be on my patrons for on my Patreon Patreon for my five dollar and up tiers. So if you want to know uh, how I made the tail, you can uh, check it out there. Anyway, if you want to know how I made him, keep watching. All right, so I'm mixing up some paint first, and I wanted it to be kind of a um, peachy, light-coloured skin tone, sort of like what rats have, like a pinky rat. Um, so I'm mixing up some, I don't even know what that one's called, it's it's like a pastel pink colour and a skin tone base colour, um, and that way it gives me a nice peachy sort of skin tone. Um, and this will be painted on top of the ears, nose and the, and the little feet. So a nice little close-up of um, the paint that I'll be using. Uh, I'm using a Derivian Matisse, the pink colour, and some uh, Chromacryl uh, skin tone base. So I cast up my resin pieces. So this is something that I've um, sculpted, moulded in silicon and now I've cast in resin. Um, and I have primed the resin pieces before I paint it. I have a video on priming about what the primers I use but it just basically helps the paint to stick to the resin because resin can be quite slippery and the paint can easily come off. Um, so I always prime my pieces prior to painting. This one doesn't have any glass eyes this time. Um, I find when I'm doing black eyes, I can get a nice gloss on them anyway without using glass eyes. Um, but I might, I may experiment in the future and see what it looks like. But for now, I'm pretty happy with the results of just using some black paint and um, some of my varnishes that I use. Uh, so moving on to the eyes, I'm using a Chromacryl black acrylic paint. Um, you can use any paint that you want. You can find it anywhere. Uh, and I'm just painting the whole area. You don't have to be too neat because when it, when I'm going to be applying some fur over the top of it. So um, the fur ends up cancelling out the messiness of the, um, the paint job. Same deal with the feet. So I had in mind of making these feet um, sort of not so fragile and being able to cast them in resin uh, because I find Sculpey is quite fragile, especially when posing things. So I tend to do things in resin when I can. Moving on to the faux fur, and like I said at the start, this is the faux fur that is troublesome. Um, it's really, really soft and really, really thick, but like I said, it's really hard to cut. So I'm just uh, marking out where I want to cut out my patterns. Um, I think this might be the last of the fur of this one that I have. Uh, I use a lot of it on my ringtail lemurs that I made for the Calgary Zoo. Um, and it was like super similar to lima fur, so that's why I use this one. Um, lucky I can get it. So you can see just how thick it is here um, when I'm running my fingers through it. It's really nice. It's kind of like chinchilla, but it is fake fur. Um, but it is really, really nice fur. Uh, so I'm going to cut out all of the pieces using a particular different pair of scissors. They're still small, but for these ones, I'm able to cut out um, the backing of the fabric. With my regular scissors that I use, I can't quite um, cut this fabric for some reason. It's quite difficult to cut, so I did a lot of trial and error of what scissors I can use that would actually cut this fabric, um, and then these little tiny ones that actually work. Um, so all the pieces are cut out and a little look at what the tail will be made of. Uh, I'll have a video on my Patreon uh, talking about 
uh, and the process of making that tail as well so you can head over there the link is in the, the description box once everything's cut out I pin it first side together and run it through a sewing machine I have changed um, my process is a little bit I've tried two different techniques which I'm happy with uh, so I'll be doing the combination of both techniques and this is what we have once we've run it through the sewing machine I leave the back end open so I can flip it the right way around same deal with the legs uh, I need to be able to poke the fabric through over itself to get the legs um, the right way around um, so this is what we have so basically all I do is just sort of pull it back on itself um, and I like to use a like a blunt wooden tool to sort of coax it out the other side uh, for any difficult pieces. Uh, don't use metal tools because it will rip your fabric and you'll have to sew that little hole up anyway. So this is what we have once I have uh, flipped it the right way around. So it's starting to take shape of a rat at the moment um, which is really cool. After that, um, I made an armature and I am inserting the armature into the body. I have a tutorial in my shop on how I make these armatures. So that's at creaturesofnat.com uh, if you want to learn how I make my armatures. And once that's done and set through, I'm going to attach all of the resin pieces. That tutorial is also available in my shop if you want to know how I do that. Um, and then once everything's all put together and dry and cured, I can start attaching things to the resin um, and I'm just giving it a quick clean up before I add any glue. Uh, so I just use a tacky fabric glue to adhere my faux fur to the resin. I find it works really well. Um, I either get from a craft store in Riot, but I can't seem to find what they used to stock. So I've recently gone to Spotlight. It's another craft store here in Australia to get some of the tacky fabric fabric glue which works just as well um, so two places if you're in Australia that you can buy the glue from so once that's uh, all dry I can begin sewing up the all of the loose ends so I put a little bit of stuffing in to begin with and then I start sewing up uh, the, the front legs um, and I use a ladder stitch to sew up all of uh, to hand sew everything really um, and, I, and it's always important to get a good quality thread as well because it really makes a difference once it's sewn up, I can start gluing the pieces using that same glue uh, and just feeding it over the resin and letting it dry overnight. And then we can start sewing the tail on, but like I said, that will be over on my Patreon. Um, so head over there if you want to learn how I did it uh, and what materials I used. Moving on to the back end and once that tail's been sewed up, I can start sewing up or the back end using that same ladder stitch. Um, I hate hand sewing, so <laughs> uh, it's always a labor of love, I guess. Uh, but the end result is really worth it because I really like making dolls. So um, even though it requires hand sewing. So this is what we have once everything, everything has been sewn up. Uh, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a trim. I've always had trouble trimming this faux fur, but I have come across a way that works really well and a tool that works really well as well. Um, so this is what it looks like after I've trimmed it up. I've tried to keep it um, a bit more fluffy than a normal rat just because I like the fur and um, it's I don't know I like chunky rats I guess <laughs> so applying the fur to the face uh, and letting it dry I'm just doing a bit of a clean up after I've applied that fur um, just getting some tweezers and just picking out some loose ends that I'm not happy with and then going over the eyes again and any other details that I want to add uh, like I said um, the eyes always turn out really well with my um, varnish that I use it's really good there's a whole heap of different varnishes you can use um, I should make a video about it or have I made a video I'm not sure if I haven't I'll make a video about it um, so yes just using that chroma grill paint and uh, adding some more details so this little one is available in my shop uh, my patrons will have early access to uh, any of my dolls that uh, going up for grabs so this little one will be uh, up for early early access um, so if you want to early access <laughs> you can join my patreon and you can um, have first dibs on her 
and just adding some whiskers and that whiskers is also on my patreon as well if you want to know how i do it and how what i use that video is there for my five dollar and up to use as well so plenty of things on there for everyone <laughs> Alrighty, so she, like I said, she will be available in my shop at creaturesofnat.com. Um, thanks again for watching. If you want to join my Patreon, you can follow the link in the description box and pledge whatever. Uh, you can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at creaturesofnat and my shop at creaturesofnat.com. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye.